everyone, it's Matt from The Pen Habit. I'm glad to be back for another video. And in today's review, I am going to be reviewing the Parker Premier. Now, the Parker Premier is one of the more expensive uh, pens in Parker's, you know, standard production line pens. Uh, now, I I'm going to preface this review by saying up to this point in my fountain pen ha hobby, I have not been a particular fan of Parker's modern pens. I have a couple of uh, vintage Parker pens, which one of which I really like quite a bit. The other one, which is just not not the right pen for me, too small. Um, but uh, but I've never purchased a modern found Parker pen because I've just never found any that spoke to me. So a few weeks back, I had a Montegrappa Espressione that I liked the way it looked. It was a very pretty pen. It just didn't fit well in my hand. Uh, it was it was not what I was looking for. So I ended up taking that back to, to my local store and swapping it out for this Parker Premier. Comes in a little uh, cardboard sleeve here. So as do most pens. I'm not entirely sure why why we do that. Nice box. Really, actually, quite a quite a nice box. You open it up, and there is a little. I'll pull this out this way. Little canvas pen sleeve. Switch over to the close-up cam here. And inside that is the Parker Premier. So I will set that aside. Inside the rest of the box, the top flips up. You've got a cleaning cloth, a serial number, or a control number, whatever that is, a little booklet with instructions, and five quink black ink cartridges. So that's what the packaging is. It's a pretty nice box. You know, I, I keep all of my boxes just because if I ever decide I want to sell my pen, it's always better to have a box around. Um, fortunately, I live alone, so I have the space to do that. Uh, let's talk about the pen, though. Very interesting pen from Parker. It's a uh, black stealth pen. The material on the outside is, according to the website, a ceramic and it's supposed to basically be chip resistant and flake resistant. It should stay on the pen and, and last for years and years and years, according to what they say. Thus far, I have seen no indication that there is any flaking or anything, but then again, I've only had the pen for a few weeks. Uh, I will say the feel of the material, it's kind of a brushed feel, reminds me a little bit of the Macrolon material that's used on a Lamy 2000. Uh, this is a metal bodied pen, however, so it, it doesn't feel quite the same, but it is it does have that kind of brushed matte feel to it. The top of the pen has a little coin in it. Oh, you know what, I forgot to turn on the lights here. Let's uh, do that here quickly. There we go. Uh, the top of the pen does have a little coin on it. Uh, looks like a little coin. Um, then the, the top also has a couple of lines in the rest of the top of the cap. They've got their traditional arrow style clips here um, with the fletching of the arrow on the side of the clips here. And then you can see kind of that uh, arrow shaped ball at the bottom. It's, it's a sturdy clip, feels pretty sturdy, um, but you know, still springy enough that you can get underneath there if you need to. Uh, I've got the little Parker logo here on the pen, bottom of the cap, couple lines, and then it says France underneath that. Rest of the pen tapers down slightly, couple of lines at the bottom here, and then the bottom is just flat across. It doesn't have that little inset coin type thing in there. Uh, really quite a, an interesting looking pen. Now, I'm generally not a big fan of stealth style pens. That's not you know, I like my pens to be flashy. What's the point of having a fountain pen if you don't want anyone to notice you? But uh, then again, I work in a job where being noticed isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's, it's we're we're a pretty relaxed work environment. So, um, the the pen pulls off pop top cap, which is nice if you're taking you know if you're taking notes that sort of thing. One of the things that most intrigued me about this pen though was the nib. This nib is really fascinating. It's an 18 karat gold nib, but it's plated in ruthenium, which gives it this gunmetal finish. It's just really stunning color. A couple of other interesting things to note, got a really nice art deco abstracted style here in the uh, arrow fletching. It's got that same sort of motif on the nib, but there's no breather hole on the nib and the nib slit only extends down to right there. So normally a nib slit would probably come, you know, down this far, but they've kept the nib slit right up there. And it's the way the pen is 
the or the nib is designed, it's very uh, it blends right in. It's hardly it's hard to even see that nib slit. Section is metal, has three little ridges right there and another three right here. And then this is a cartridge converter pen. So, um, you know, one little uh, demerit on the case of Parker is they do use their own proprietary converters and cartridges. And you know how I feel about proprietary. I'm not a fan of proprietary. That being said, um, well, before I, that being said, one of the reasons why I don't like proprietary cartridges and converters is because a lot of times they're significantly more expensive than the standard stuff. So for instance, the a standard international converter from, you know, Schmidt or whatever, you can get those for about five US dollars. Uh, you can get them even cheaper other places if you get, you know, ch more cheaply made ones. The Parker converter, which is about the same size. The only real difference is that it's got a slightly wider opening is $10. There's no need for, I, I can buy an entire pen for $10. Um, so that, that does bug me a little bit. Now it does come with one converter, but I, for every pen I have, I like to have at least two converters that will work with it in case one of them craps out on me. I'm not stuck without being able to use the pen. Um, but that being said, uh, it does work well. Unlike, say, the Con 20 or the Con 50 converters that Pilot uses, which I can't stand, um, this, this converter does work well. And the slightly wider opening at the base of the converter does seem to help a little bit with ink flow, which we'll talk about when we get to writing. Uh, the other thing that I find kind of interesting about this pen is I, I had been using the pen for a few weeks. Uh, and... I like it a lot, a lot more than I was expecting to, honestly, because I've just not been a fan of modern Parkers up to this point. Uh, it's a very well-built pen, very comfortable in the hand for me, quite easy to hold. And when I weighed it and measured it, I was shocked at the measurements and, and in particular, the weight. This pen, when capped, is 46 grams. That's a pretty heavy pen. When it's uh, uncapped, it's 32. The thing is, I was expecting it to be 20. It doesn't feel anywhere near that heavy. And I don't know why. Um, I suspect it's because of the balance of the pen, but this pen doesn't feel heavy like some of my heavy pens do. It doesn't feel heavy like a Jin Hao or, uh, or like some of those wood turn pens that I started off with. It feels much lighter than it actually is, uh, which is a neat trick. I'm not sure how they pulled that off. Um, but yeah, so it, it is a little bit heavier, but if you think you don't like heavy pens, try this one in the hand, because you might be surprised that it's not as heavy, it doesn't feel as heavy as it is. The, the diameters, the pen is about 11 millimeters in, the, in this part of the section right here toward the top, uh, 13 millimeters at the widest part of the barrel, and 14 and a half millimeters at the widest part of the cap. So it is a slightly wider grip, um, that doesn't really bother me all that much. I know some people don't like wider grips, so just want to make you aware of that. It is 127 millimeters long when it is uncapped, and you can see here fits very nicely in my hand. Uh, it is 140 while capped, and the pen can be posted, and when posted, it is 156 millimeters. Still very nicely balanced when posted, so if you're the kind of person who posts your pen, you, you can rest assured that you, uh, you can do that with this pen. It doesn't post terribly securely though. I should add that. It does feel like if you held it upside down and shook a little bit, the cap would fall off. So it will post, but not super securely. So this is one of the few pens I've ever purchased where the nib needed no adjustment at all. I, I've not touched it. I have no intention of touching it. It, it was perfect out of the gate. One thing I should note, however, is that the store that I bought this from had two of these in stock. They had one in fine and one in medium. And I generally prefer medium nibs. So I tried the fine, liked it a lot. I said, you asked him if they had a medium. They did. So he pulled it out and I wrote with it. And the nib was atrocious. It was just awful. It was scratchy. It was rough. It was like it hadn't been polished at all. No adjustment, no polish. It was awful. And I handed it to the, the sales clerk and said, 
would you write with this? It, it wasn't ink. You just, you know, rub it on some paper. He's like, that's, that's terrible. And I said, yeah, I think I'll stick with the fine unless you have another medium in stock. They didn't. Um, and what he told me was that with some of these pens, some of these Parker pens, the nibs can be hit or miss. Um, now, I have not purchased a lot of these pens, so I don't have any sort of sense of how true that is in the big picture, other than that's what the salesperson told me, and I tend to believe this store because they know what they're talking about there. So with this pen, what I would say is make sure you buy from a place that has a pretty lenient return policy. <laughs> we'll, we'll take care of you if the, the nib is bad, or if... Uh, you know, or or buy it from someplace like nibs.com or richardspens.com that will tune the nib for you before they send it to you. Um, in the case of this pen, the medium nib, if I had tried that, would have probably been, would have gone back right away. But this fine nib is probably the nicest, smoothest, wettest, most wonderful fine nib I've ever used, shy of my Visconti Van Gogh, which, which, which wins the award as the best fine nib I've ever used. Um, so great pen, really like it a lot, like the design, like the uh, kind of the art deco feel of it. Even though I'm not a huge fan of these matte black stealth style pens, I like the, the unique texture of the finish. Um, I love the way it feels in my hand, and I really like the way it writes. So let me show you how it writes. So this is the Parker Premier. I'm going to zoom in just a touch here. I had to zoom out to show you the box. Okay, and we have an 18 karat gold nib in fine. And this is this is a fine. It's not a Japanese style fine. It's more like a, a Western style fine. So closer to a Japanese style medium, which which is is a nice, nice place for it, I think. Uh, the ink for today is Iroshizuku Murasaki Shikibu. This is the Japanese Beauty Berry Purple Ink. I reviewed this uh, a couple of couple of videos back, so you can go see my my full, very long review of this ink there. So our quote for today is: Okay, so this pen writes wonderfully. Uh, it wrote wonderfully. I, I rinsed out the, the pen as I do with every new pen with a little bit of pen flush and a little bit of water, inked it up, and I've not had problem number one since then. Uh, and I, that's something I don't know that I could say for most of my pens. It, it's been just a wonderful, wonderful pen to write with. Uh, wetness, we have... it's. It's moderately wet. It's not terribly wet, but it will put down a decently wet line. This is a pen I'd be okay using on cheap paper because it's not so wet, um, but it is wet enough that it will get your attention. Um, with being an 18 karat gold nib, you'd expect a little bit of line variation, and there's a tiny bit, but not much. And I've, I, you know, because the nib slits in particular, the nib slit is so short on this nib. It doesn't go down. If it had gone down further, I suspect this nib, nib would be a little bit springier than it is because um, it does have fairly long tines, but uh, they appear to have uh, decided that that's not what they wanted to do with this nib. Um, there is, you know, it, it writes nicely. You can get a little bit 
a variation there if you push pretty hard, but I don't like doing that. Upside down writing. It's kind of scratchy, but not terrible. Um, very fine, kind of needlepoint fine. And uh, it's just a nifty pen. It's It really is a, a, a nice pen, very nice writer. Um, you know, I just, I really haven't had any complaints with it since I got it. No complaints. So that is my review of this Parker Premier. Uh, if I, if Parker gets around to, to building some more interesting looking pens here in the not too distant future, I might give them another look. But uh, I think the lesson I've taken away from this particular pen experience is with, with the Parker pens, these are pens I want to try before I buy or buy from a place that's going to adjust them and to the way I like to write before I get them. Because if what I was told is correct, the QC on these can be a little lackluster. So be aware, if you get a good one, you've got a great pen. If you get a bad one, maybe not so much. Thank you again for watching. I am glad you're here. I'm glad I can do these videos for you. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And as always, please like or subscribe the videos. I'm thinking I might do a, a, a fancy little giveaway sometime around uh, subscriber 2000. I hit 1500 about a week ago. So I, I'm, I'm kind of crunching on what I want to do when I hit 2000 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, but check out all the social media links, head over to penhabit.com to see more, uh, more photos of the pen. And thank you for watching. We'll see you here next time on the pen habit. Bye.